What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create this tree on a lake or a river design. Now as always there's links to everything in the description down below. A couple of brushes that I've made for you that are totally free you can just grab them from the description as well as the canvas size and the palette for today's design. If you like tutorials like this please be sure to hit subscribe for weekly tutorials but if you want even more tutorials from me there's a link in the description down below to my Patreon. We can come and join the family and get access to a catalogue that grows by three every single month and currently stands at 70 tutorials. When you join, you get access to the whole lot. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. The link's in the description down below. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've potentially added in the guide stencil that I've provided, just to show you what that looks like if you haven't already seen it, it's just this type of outline, just to give you more of a sort of guide as to where to add your items in on the screen. But I'm gonna use mine, but just drop it all the way down to around about sort of 10% opacity, and we'll just carry on from there. So I'm gonna make sure I've got an empty layer, and it's gonna go underneath my guide stencil in front of my background color. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to my colors, and I'm gonna grab the bottom right color in the palette and drag it onto the screen. And we're gonna go ahead and create the gradient colors for the sky as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. We'll go ahead and we'll grab our brush and change it to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're gonna make it fairly large, around about sort of 35%. And if we go to our colors and we grab the top right color in the palette, we're gonna add that to the top right of our canvas. So over here, we're just gonna go from sort of a rounded nature, blend it towards the middle and just add a big chunk of color up there. And don't go too far down. We don't want to go past sort of what will be the uh, water level down here. Then we're going to go to our colors and grab the middle color in that far right column and do the same, but on the opposite side. So in the top left corner, we're just going to go ahead and just bring that yellow in and blend it down and blend it across towards the uh, purpley color. Now, once you've done that, just go up to your adjustments and go to the option of Gaussian Blur and swipe from left to right. We really want to blend these together. I want to end up with a really nice soft looking background. So something around about sort of 80% looks pretty good to me. They're really heavily blended. If we get this nice drop down of color, we can always come back to it at a later date if we want to sort of uh, increase the amount of color in that. For now, we'll tap on our adjustments and we'll go ahead and go to the layer. We'll swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We'll grab our cursor and we'll flip it vertically. Then we'll grab the freeform option and just grab the top and bring that down. So we're gonna end up now with the reflection of the color in the water below. And we're gonna bring it down to this point here. It's about two thirds down and then you end up with all this color. And we can even extend it out a little bit off the bottom of the canvas. If we tap on our cursor, this may or may not apply to you, but you may see a bit of a line at the top of that layer. So just grab your eraser, tap on it and use something like the uh, airbrush and the soft airbrush and just go from left to right and just make sure you blend that out get rid of that line. We want this to have a really smooth transition so you don't really know where the color sort of stops. Next up, let's go ahead and add in our rocks. So we're gonna to go to our layers and we'll create a new layer. For a moment, we can go ahead and group the other three layers at the bottom. So all of the sky and the uh, water as well, we'll group them together and we'll just collapse that group down. The empty layer then, we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here. It's the middle color in the first column. And we're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. Now my monoline brush has under stabilization, a very small amount of streamline to it and even less stabilization. You could even drop them a little bit further as well if you want to make them nice and jittery for your rocks. So I'm going to tap on done when I'm done. And we're going to zoom in just a little bit into the guide there. And you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six rocks. And the brush size is 1%. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in those rocks here. So I'm just gonna start over this one on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna draw in a rock and then just let that run around to the start point. I'm gonna drag and drop my color in. Now, of course, because they all sit behind one another, we need to consider that. So we're gonna to go to our layers and create another new layer. We will group both of these layers together. So the empty layer and the rock we've already drawn. So right from left to right on both and hit the option of group. And you can rename this if you want, you can rename it. We'll grab our keyboard and we'll call it rocks, just so that we can come back to it later on. And on the empty layer in there, we're gonna go ahead and draw in the second rock that sits in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in over here. So draw in that in, following the stencil guide. Again, I always provide a guide because it's just nice and easy for positioning 
it's the actual rest of the design that's the in intricate part. So we'll drag and drop the color into that space. We'll then go to our layers. And I want this next rock to sit in behind the one that we just drew. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer, but we'll drag it underneath that rock that we just drew and we'll draw in the next one. So it's gonna sit in behind slightly and it's gonna be a bit of a different shape. It's gonna sort of run off down to the right hand side, down towards the water level and then across the water and in behind that rock. And I'll drag and drop the color in when I'm done. We'll then go to our layers. I want the next rock to sit in behind the one I just drew. So I'll create a new layer and drag it underneath. And we'll draw in the next rock, which is just gonna sit here and get that in, link that up and drag and drop the color in. And again, we're gonna go further back again. So we're gonna create another new layer and drag it underneath and we'll draw in the next rock. Draw that in and then we'll drag and drop the color in. And we've got one more to make. So we'll go to our layers, create a new layer and drag it again underneath. And this one's just sitting just around the edge. It's a very small one. It's just one that just sits right on the edge over there. And I'll drag and drop the color in for a moment. And then I'll just increase the size of that just a little bit on the top there. Like so, add some nice bumps and lumps in there. That's fine, gives it a bit more character. And then while we're on the rocks, let's go ahead and add in some highlights to them. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll grab the top rock, which is the uh, front one there. You can see that's the second one from the left. We're gonna simply go ahead and tap on the layer and we're gonna to go to the option of alpha lock. So we can't paint outside of that rock now. And if we go to our colors, we're gonna go ahead and grab the second color in the middle row. And we're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna to go to the option of painting and we're gonna use the spectra brush. Now with this brush, we're then gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in on the rock for you. So let's make the brush size a little bit bigger. Let's go up to something around about 5%. And we're gonna do it in two or three motions. We're gonna go ahead and just swipe across the side here and then swipe across down here. And then you create this sort of paneling effect where this side here is facing up to the light source on the left, which is ultimately what we need to consider. So it needs to be a bit brighter on the left. And then you end up with, there's a little bit of a shape there. There's a triangle here and then there's another panel here. It's totally up to you then whether or not you then add another sort of stripe across maybe. So you could go along here, for example. I would say less is more. Uh, just so that we can keep it nice and uh, sort of available to add in some contrast later on. But ultimately, that's all you need to do to create a really sort of semi-smooth rock, but it has lots of panels to it. Then we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go down to the next rock. We'll tap on it. We'll alpha lock it. We'll find out where it is. And it's this long one over here. Again, I want to prioritize that the light source is up in the top left. So I'm going to go ahead and just swipe across that side there with a little bit more pressure. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just run that down here. And that's all I wanna do. Again, I can go ahead and maybe introduce a little bit of color there, but just a tiny bit. And then again, we'll go to our layers, we'll move to the next rock, which is the next one to the right. So I'll tap on it, alpha lock it. And again, we'll go ahead and we'll brighten up that surface that's gonna face the left-hand side. And you ideally wanna do it in one motion, and then we'll just add in a, a flick off to the right. And I'm gonna leave that one, I like that just nice it's just got a little bit of more simplicity to it let's then go to our layers and go down to the next rock tap on it alpha lock it and we'll go ahead and just brighten up the top surface a little bit on the back and that's just enough and if they're looking a bit too similar to each other just vary up your angle maybe go across from a little bit more of a straighter angle and a bit more vertical down on the opposite side and that should change it from the last one then go to your layer we're going to go to the final rock on the right tap on it and alpha lock it and we'll zoom in, we'll introduce a big amount of color on there and then maybe a tiny bit on the back side of it, just a little bit like so. I've got one more to do, of course, on the far left. So we'll go to our layers and go down to the last rock, tap on it and we will alpha lock it. And we'll move across. We're gonna go ahead and brighten up that top side. So maybe a bit more than that because this one's facing our light source. And then we'll go across it a few times and maybe make this one a little bit different maybe give it a lot more color compared to the ones on the right. So you end up with that slow transition of color all the way around. But we are gonna move into some shadows anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and we'll grab the top color here in the third column. And we're gonna go ahead and go to our brush library. We're gonna go to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush or even the medium brush. Let's move to the medium brush instead. And the brush size, let's make it roughly around about sort of 5%. Now, if we take a look at our layer, we're on the far left rock. So nothing sits in front of it. 
but the lighting's coming across. So maybe we do need to just darken in here a little bit and on the back side of the rock, just a tiny bit. And if anything, I'll take that down a few shades and do it again. And we'll darken it up at the bottom where it touches the water. We're gonna move across. So we're gonna go to our layers and we'll go to the top one in the group. It's just this rock here. That's all, we'll just wanna go from left to right. And if we take a look at this rock, nothing sits in front of it. So we don't have to go ahead and put any shadows in place for that. The only thing maybe is we'll just darken up this backside just a tiny bit. And again, a little bit around the bottom. We'll then go to our layers and move across a rock. And so we're on sort of this long one here. Do any rocks sit in front of it? Yes, this one here. What sort of shadow would that cast across? Well, you can literally just follow the angle a little bit and sort of darken in behind it a little bit like this. That way that one casts a shadow immediately onto that rock. And again, maybe we darken up the bottom a little bit and maybe just a little bit on the end. But just a nice light pressure to it. If we then go to our next rock across, Again, if we take a look at it, is anything sitting in front of it? Yes, this one here. So we could darken up in this space here. And that's all I'm going to do. Maybe just darken up the back end of it just a tiny bit. We'll then move across to our next rock. Again, what's it's in front? This rock here somewhat is quite close. So we'll darken up in that groove. That's fine. And then maybe a tiny bit on the back end to just brighten up the left side. And the far rock there will move to that layer. We'll just darken up to it, add in some separation and we'll darken up this one quite a bit on the far right side just so that the shadows are quite obvious as they make their way around. So that's our rocks done for a moment. We may come back to them later on and add in some textures etc but that is somewhat of the highlights and shadows all done. We're then going to go ahead and collapse the group down for the rocks. We'll tap underneath on the group underneath for the sky and we'll create a new layer and in fact we'll create another new layer and swipe from left to right on both and we'll group this and we'll call this ground. And this is going to be the ground that the tree is sat on. We'll add grass to it later on as well. So the bottom layer in this group, we'll go to our colors. We will go ahead and we will grab this color here. It is the middle color in the first column. We'll go back to our brush and change it to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And we're just going to go ahead and draw in the ground. So it just runs over here, then in behind what will be the tree and then it just runs down and then you can go through the back of the rocks here and link up at the start so you can drag and drop your color in and then you've added a nice little bit of ground let's add the tree in next though because i want to make sure that we have the tree in place so we can add the shadows onto the ground so sometimes you have to bear in mind the next element you're adding so if we collapse the ground layer down and we create two new layers we swipe from left to right on both and group them together and we'll rename this group and we'll call it tree so we'll grab our keyboard and we'll call it tree. The bottom layer in that group, we're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the top left color in the palette. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go into inking and we're going to use the studio pen for this one. And the brush size is set to 25%. Now, if you've got the stencil guide, you'll be able to see this silhouette and the outline of a tree. And if you can't on the ground, just simply go to the ground layer and just lower the opacity down of that for a moment while we draw in the roots of the tree, as you can see there. So I've just lowered the opacity down of that for a second. And we'll get started. Now this is pressure sensitive, so if you press really lightly, you get a little thin line, and if you press really firm, you get a nice strong line. And this is something we can use to our advantage. So for example, here at the bottom, we've got the first root. I'm gonna just start off really light and then I'll build on top of that with some pressure and then just let this run into the tree. And I'll let that root come in here like so. So it runs into a very thin point and just anchors down into the ground. And with a tree, you kind of want to start with the first ones so you, and also the, sort of the main width of the tree. So you can start off, say here, for example, put your guidelines in as your width, and then you can work off from there. And you can just rotate your way around to the left-hand side. So do the same over here, a nice light amount of pressure and then just build that up nice and bobbly. That'll look great. And likewise underneath as well, just adds more character and age to it. And then again, we'll add another one over here too, that just goes all the way up and then into the body and then you can fill that gap in. And I've actually got two that are really close together as if this one's just sort of pivoting around the other side of the uh, land here. I'm gonna link them together a bit more. And then we just do the same on the opposite side. So you can draw one in the middle and maybe make this one have like a bit of an arc to it. And you want it to be a bit more bobbly and lumpy rather than 
uh, nice and sort of straight. We'll let that one just sort of curve round and then go into another point here, another root, and then just fill in any gaps. And then we'll just run down from the edge and we'll just add in another one that just runs down here. And you can see I'm letting my brush pressure get really low and really, really thin towards the end. And it looks awesome. You get that really rooty look to it. Really uh, nice and bumpy and lumpy. And then it runs into a very small, thin point. And then once you've done that, you can build off of that into your trunk. So like I can add a few more bumps here, for example, just for some nice character. I can nicely fill that in and you've got your roots done. We can then go ahead and just make our way up the tree. Now I typically don't tend to go all the way to the top and then work from there. I'll typically tend to sort of start over here and then branch all the way out over to here and get a bit of a guide as to sort of the styling and what I really like the look of and then just start to work in lots and lots of small little branches and the pressure is the same and I'm trying to make sure that the jitters are still there in the branches so it's nice and just loose really fun and don't worry too much I mean what I tend to do with these tree designs is I like to do the, the sort of arms of the tree and everything even though they will be hidden potentially by the uh, leaves that are going to sit on top but you have to sometimes do this in case there's a gap in the tree so once you've done one arm, you can then move up and don't feel like you need to complete an arm completely. You can sort of run a line all the way up sort of to here and then maybe leave it. Put in your main branches first, potentially, because we've got the stencil guide there or the guide stencil either way. Um, you can nicely follow that if needs be. The only thing you always have to make sure is that the weight always starts off heavier at the trunk, of course, and then just slowly but surely gets thinner and thinner and thinner as it makes its way outwards towards the end. So you can do one side and then you can get a gauge as well for how much you've added in on one side. Therefore, you know how to sort of uh, balance out the tree. So that's not really necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. But if you do something like that and take into consideration sort of how busy you've made one side, you can then make sure your whole design is nice and balanced. If you accidentally sort of make one side a little bit too heavy, you'll uh, really be able to see it in the end result. And likewise, how far as well all the branches sort of run out. I've got my guide, of course, in place here. And my guide, just so you know, is typically from where I've drawn this previously and I'm really happy with the shape of it. I like to keep it in play because one, it will help potentially someone out there who may sort of struggle with sort of the layouts. And also I like to make sure I replicate the design as I've drawn it already. I already liked it at that point, so I don't want to sort of stray far from that. So a little something like this. So, you see some of these branches have these lovely little sort of jitters on the end, I love that. I'm gonna move up again, we'll move into this branch here, and this one's just gonna be a little bit shorter, just have another one that runs off the top, like so. But if you're sort of happy and you wanna sort of test yourself a little bit more, don't use the guide. Um, I provide them in majority of tutorials where I feel necessary, but ultimately sort of test your, your metal a little bit. You can see what I'm drawing on the screen anyway. So you can just replicate that with your own skill set. So we're going to get right up to the top of the tree now, and then we're just going to create some more little branches. And I'm constantly trying to check the weight of them, make sure that they are nice and sort of thicker towards the center. Now I'm happy with that for the moment. Let's go ahead and then just block this in a little bit more, and then I can move into this area here where I can start to replicate the other branches over here. And if you are using the stencil guide, try to be maybe a little bit sort of creatively free with it and try and maybe just, you know, design a tree that you like. Or what you can do is replicate mine completely from the guide. And then once you're happy with it, then go, okay, well, maybe I can try my own tree. Let me see what I can come up with. All of them are gonna look different to each other. All of ours will regardless if we're using it anyway, but you can just get an idea. Sometimes it's just about understanding how to sort of draw it with muscle memory, first of all, the techniques involved to just draw it, rather than um, having to creatively come up with it in your mind and visualize it. Sometimes you can just use the guide, understand how it needs to be sort of worked out, and then you know what to do in your own work at another time. All of these tutorials really should be a nice little gateway for you potentially to experiment, have some fun, maybe creating your own work. 
let's carry on. Let's make our way all the way across here. So this one's a little bit time consuming on this part, but it's so much so more worth it rather than using a stamp. It is gonna be a lot nicer, especially if we do get a glimpse of the tree through the uh, leaves. You'll see all these awesome little branches. Also, it's just a fun exercise anyway, to just try and draw a tree and make it look really cool and wicked and twisty and maybe it's something we can work on ready for Halloween. So we will go ahead and introduce some here. Now these smaller ones that I introduced just in these sort of spaces here is kind of me just sort of showing that there's a branch going in the far direction, almost in the direction that we're facing. So it's pointing away from us, uh, therefore it looks like a just a brand new shoot, but in actual fact it's not. It's just one that's just facing away from us and so we can't really see it too well. So it looks and appears a little bit shorter, but it's just on the far side of the tree. So that is gonna be the outline of my tree. And again, you kind of wanna look at your weights. What I would look for, for example, is here. I would draw in like two lines. How far does this one move across compared to this one? And my initial look at this, I would have said this one leans across a bit more, but the tree is slightly off-centered, which is fine. So therefore it kind of balances it out, which looks really nice to the eye. It's nice and sort of simple to look at. Let's now go ahead and add in some texture to the tree. So we're gonna go ahead and we will tap on the empty layer above and we'll tap on it and clipping mask it to the tree. We'll go to our colors and we will grab the darker tone here at the top of the third column. We're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna go into organic. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and use the bamboo brush. Now this brush is quite an interesting brush to use. If I uh, go ahead and just create a separate layer for a second so you can see, um, sometimes this brush may catch, they were all pretty much the same pressure. Sometimes it may catch, sometimes it won't. And sometimes it'll be a nice streak. The quicker you move, the more likely it is to have a bit of a streaky nature to it. So what we're trying to do here is create all the grooves in the tree. And this brush is awesome because it only decides to catch when it wants, we can then let it dictate the sort of nature of the tree and the structure of it. Now, light source is gonna come from the left-hand side and make its way across our canvas. So it's gonna end up with a slightly darker side over here on the right. So if we start here first, we can go ahead and just run our pen up and down. And the size for this is 13%. We can run our pen up the side here and you can see it's just adding in some scrapes. Now they may be a little bit difficult to see with the camera, just, but just bear with me. We're just running some streaks up and down sort of the tree here and it's gonna create all the lovely natural grooves in the tree. And then once you start to get a little bit lower down here, Try not to sort of keep them too straight. You wanna now start to bear in mind, how are your roots now gonna dictate how this looks at the bottom? So for example, this one here, I'm gonna run some darkness on this side here, because this side, of course, is facing away from our light source. And then as it gets into this center here, I'm gonna to start to just let that run up as if this then becomes quite a substantial sort of factor in the shape of the tree. And if that runs up to here, then it's created quite a big groove in the actual tree itself. So everything you do at these, this stage here can really dictate how the tree overall looks. And you know, then you can run a, a sort of line off from here as well. And we can go ahead and in this gap here, we've got another root. So let's just imagine that this root is in front of it. So therefore we can follow that shape. And I thought it's almost like I've just drawn on a layer underneath there and revealed this shape. So it's always something you can bear in mind. So I'm imagining now there's a big groove here and then it's gonna cast a shadow to the right, if anything. I do wanna make sure we darken underneath some of the roots as well, just to make sure that they are nice and dark as they touch the ground. Over here again, how can we show in whichever, you know, whichever flavor we prefer, you know, this one in front of this one or this one in front of this one? Based on perspective, I would say that this one is in front. So we'll follow this route and we will try to create another groove here and just let that run up towards the tree. And then again, this one now definitely looks as if its structure sits in front of these ones. So there's always things you can bear in mind with like roots and trees and branches. And you'll see that in a second as we make our way up the tree of how you can dictate the overall shape and tell the person looking at this that this branch is in front of this one or um, it either, for example, here, if I was to draw a line here, and you draw that straight down, you would say that that branch is on the far side. Whereas if I was to let those lines all naturally just follow up here, 
such as here, and then you know draw a line in that fashion, for example, that branch looks like it's closer to us than the trunk, so therefore it dictates that it runs off that way. There's lots of stuff that we can do to just show movement in the tree. You can draw a line down here, for example, just a very small line, and that immediately pushes that branch further back. So we're gonna go ahead and just add in some under here on this branch. Now, this area here is most likely the area that's gonna be seen through our leaves. So just bear that in mind. As we get really high up and towards the end of the branches, I'm just gonna be really quick with it. I'm gonna just let a lot of this darkness just have a basic rule that it needs to sit underneath the branch basically. And on the ends, I'm just gonna run my pen across it. You don't have to stress about it too much at all. We'll then go ahead and create more grooves through the center of the tree up towards the top. And then here, for example, well, let's let this let's let this branch just sort of curve out from the actual main body of the tree. So that line there, just a simple line, now lets me know whoop, the tree runs in that direction, but the trunk carries on in behind. And I'm happy with that. So I will allow that just to run off in that direction. We'll let that just run up here. And again, as we get further up here, please don't stress over it now at this stage because this is ultimately potentially going to be hidden by our leaves. So again, simple rule, just underneath all of the branches, just make sure that they're a little bit darker, see where this brush wants to catch, and then just darken up underneath the majority of sort of the end parts as well. So keep it quick. Let's not stress on this one. Lovely stuff. Let's just make our way all the way up before we go down the opposite side. So here I've got quite a lot of branches all quite close together and maybe they could have done with being separated, but that's fine. I will just add in some color on there. I'm gonna make sure that the trunk is the dominant here in this particular example. And likewise here as well, I wanna make sure the trunk at this stage, especially when it gets a little bit thinner, sometimes it's best to prioritize it rather than your branches. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit more dominant, put that straight line in there basically darken up the underside. So again, light source is gonna come from the top left at all times. Keep that in your mind. Lovely stuff. And try to sort of make sure the gaps look a little bit different to each other. You don't want the gaps to be super consistent. But you can already see a lot of structure to this tree. We are gonna add shadows to the left still, um, just where there's like little grooves and stuff, but they will be far less in terms of density than the right side. So for example, if we go back down to the roots, let's go ahead and go along the bottom of the root like we needed to do. And then in this area here, for example, we will allow this one just to create a groove that runs up. This puts this in front, but you also understand that this root here does run into a bit of a deep groove in the tree and you can just leave it there. So it just has a bit of a groove there. You can darken that up quite a bit and just leave it be. This one here, we're gonna essentially draw the top of this root. So we're gonna dictate where that runs into the tree. A little something like this. Now here, for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of darkness in the groove here, but ultimately these join into one and that's fine like that, I like that. Here we can go ahead and maybe where this sort of bulges out a little bit here, I can just create a little bit of a flick down from there and a couple more on the top surface just to show some more texture. Just keeping it nice and light in this area. Over here, we can go ahead and underside some of these branches. Same rules apply, to be honest. Just a little bit of darkness, a little bit of darkness under here too. Adding that in, separating them from the tree itself. And again, we'll go under here. These ones would have a lot of darkness and I really enjoy this bamboo brush. Every time that I see it just sort of randomly decide where it wants to attack onto the screen, I love it you're at the mercy of the brush, which is kind of a nice thing because you don't have to come up with the randomness of the structure. It's gonna do it for you. So let's just go ahead and run that into here. Couple of scrapes, that's fine, I like that. Let's move up towards the top and the underside. Keeping it real simple now, real quick. Just a few dashes on the ends, like we said before. So a couple of dashes on the end and then the underside of the main branch, that's fine. Here, for example, I can maybe just add in a bit of darkness on that branch because to show that it's on the far side of the tree, not next to the trunk. 
my brush, I can run that into the body a bit more and I can introduce a bit of darkness in that gap and a bit of darkness up here. So we're trying to be a little bit quicker here at this top end. Lovely stuff. And let's take a look at here, maybe just a couple more random lines in here and dashes and scrapes. You can do the occasional really long one if you want, like a really deep groove in the tree, something like that. Have some fun just chucking it in, seeing what it comes up with, and you may end up with something really nice and textured. So I'm just going to darken up in here just a little bit more. Get some deeper grooves in there, maybe a little bit on the top surface. And then this right side here, I'm just going to try and darken up again a little bit more because that is going to be the shadowed side of our tree. So I'm just going to add some more scrapes and scratches, ultimately leaving space on the left. So you should end up with a little something like this. Let's go ahead and add in some highlights. So we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We'll go to our colors and we will go ahead and grab the fourth color on that top row. And kind of the same principle, but obviously on the opposite side, bearing in mind we're doing highlights now. So rather than sort of down in the grooves, we're on top of a lot of the layers now. So for example, here on the roots, let's go ahead and just scrape in some really prominent highlights and larger areas of color. Now take a look at your shadows though, and just see if you can maybe slot some of these highlights in the gaps. Now, at first, this may look a little bit garish in terms of the color, but we can lower the opacity down of it. We can go ahead and uh, also add a gradient to it. So I'm just scraping now on the top edge of some of these roots and just dragging that, following the flow that we've created for the tree and its roots and the, the trunk, etc. And then just brighten up here as well. Bearing in mind again, the light from that left hand side, we don't want it to trickle round to the right. So yes, we can add in the occasional tiny little groove, but I really would just allow it to stop at that sort of midway point. And then with your branches, what we wanna do is go ahead and prioritize it on the top edge. So we'll add in some brighter color on there. It can be pretty heavy or it can be pretty light. It's totally up to you. We do need to make sure though that the light does continue, or these, these lighter colors anyway, through the center of the tree. So all the way up. Because again, if we see a lovely little gap in the tree, we want it to be nice and bright, like the sun is just catching on it. I'm just going to scrape away a few times up there. Just literally keeping my pressure really light. If I press really firm, you'll get something like this. But if you keep it nice and light, you'll end up with some really lovely sort of scrapes and paint scratches almost. Then on your branches, we're just going to very quickly run over the top. Nothing too heavy like that but just a nice light scraping across the top of some of these branches, just where the light's catching it on the ends is fine. If essentially what you're doing there is every little gap and little splash of yellow is telling the person looking at it, there's a gap in the tree and the light is just catching on the branches. Let's do the same over here too. It's all about coming up with a convincing story. That's all it really is. There's the magic to it. It's just a convincing story to tell someone, no, 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 there's a gap in the tree. That's why that light ends there. So on this far right side now, on some of the branches, I'm adding in a little bit of color, but nothing too close to the trunk, just a little bit along some of these branches. And ultimately you should end up with a little something like this. Now, as I mentioned, this is looking a little bit too uh, sort of bright at the moment. So we're gonna go to the layer, we'll tap on it and we will alpha lock it. So we've alpha locked all of our little streaks. We're gonna go to our brush library and we're gonna go to airbrushing and the soft brush. The color then needs to be switched to this color here. It is the uh, top of the sixth column and we're going to reduce the brush size down to something about four percent so we're in a good amount of control and to the right hand side for example in the trunk we're just going to let this just come in here and it's going to really tone down some of the highlights so I'm just toning them down through the center of the tree on the right hand side I'm not going up to this left edge I'm just blending them out here just to allow them to run around the tree ultimately just keeping this side here a little bit brighter you can, if you want to, reduce your brush size down to about 2% and even get really intricate with some of the highlights you've added and just add a tiny bit of this sort of more muted tone in them just to vary them up a little bit. Likewise, on some of the branches, we can just give them a little run over. So they've got a little bit of sort of transition of color. You see this one here, how it runs from gray to the yellow? I really like that. That's fine. Again, under here, we'll just tone out a few of them. Just tone them out just a little bit. Lovely stuff. 
and we'll leave it exactly like that. Maybe another streak through the middle, but that's cool. Let's move on now to the leaves because this is where it's going to take a little bit of a different direction. So let's go to our layers. We can go ahead and we can create a new layer and we're going to drag it underneath the tree group. So it's going to sit in front of the ground here. It's going to be on its own for a moment. We're going to go to our colors for a moment and grab this color here, the top of the third column. In your brush library, you're going to need to go to imported and you're going to need to find the brush that I've created for this, which is a variation on the snow gum brush. As you can tell, I love a variation on this brush and we're using the leaf gum one. Now the brush size is set to the size of 12%. It will orientate itself based on how you're drawing. So if you go nice and horizontal, it's going to be perfectly horizontal. And if I go in a vertical fashion, it's going to be leaning more vertically. So you want to start off nice and horizontal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the background shape of our trees. So when I do trees like this, I create the background layer, which are going to be the darker trees and the leaves, sorry, that you can see. So you can go ahead and rather than just follow it, because you'll end up with a really strong trail, just tap away a few times and just tap away, adding in a few and leaving those lovely gaps in the tree, just where you can break through and you can let some of the light through. Leaving a gap in the tree sometimes is really key to just showing that it's not just a lump of color. You know, there's nice breakages in there and it's not a super dense tree. Depends on time of year, of course. But we'll add some on here. Add some here too. And these are the background shapes anyway, so we don't need to uh, stress over them quite so much. It's just a nice big sort of shape that we like the look of. The odd little one that runs astray is fine. And again, gaps are going to be nice and key here for a moment. And less is more at this stage because what we're going to do is, first of all, go to our adjustments and go to hue, saturation and brightness. And we're going to go ahead and bring the brightness down. We're going to bring that down to roughly around about sort of the 42% mark. And you can leave the saturation or you can drop the saturation just a smidge, maybe down to 40%. That would take some of the color out or you can leave it at the 50 mark. I'm going to leave it at 50, quite like that. Then we're going to go to our layers and we're going to go in front of the tree group. You can even go ahead and tap on the top layer in the tree group and create a new layer. Make sure it's not clipped so it doesn't have this symbol. So tap on it and turn off clipping mask if it does. And in our colors, we're going to go ahead and grab this bottom color in the second column. Same principle applies, except now you're painting right on top of everything in front of the tree, in front of those leaves, everywhere. So you can now go ahead and, for example, just position some here. So I can just tap here, I can tap here. And I'm just tapping away, creating little clusters of this beautiful color. And the variation of the brush, I've introduced a lot of light and darker tones. So it will allow you to create, you know, there will be different tones in each stroke that you add and all the scattering of the leaves as well. So you might see different colors. You may see different tones, such as brighter and darker variations, but you will see a lovely amount of color. And you can make the odd sort of like little stray bit run a, a wild a little bit. You can you know, maybe introduce a little bit down here, make the shape a little bit more unique, maybe like have a few that run across over here just a little bit more. You don't necessarily want like a perfectly round fluffy shape. It's not so much a cloud, is it? It is a tree. So we want to have like little bits here that stick out and just add a little bit more shape and character and maybe just a little bit up here as well. That'll look awesome. And that is exactly why we did the work on our tree because you can now see through some of the gaps and you can see through some of the leaves and see the structure of the actual tree itself. So let's also now start to work on a consideration of the light source. So if we go to our layer, we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're going to go ahead and change the top one from normal and we're going to change it to the option of overlay. This will give us a much, much darker variation. We're going to tap on the layer and we're going to clipping mask it to the original one underneath. What we're then going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our eraser and tap on the eraser and also switch it to the uh, organic option for me, the leaf gum brush. Similar sort of size around about the 12% mark. We're going to prioritize the darker colors off to that right side. So we're going to go ahead and just get rid of it. But because the brush will allow you to sort of randomly scatter, we can randomly choose where some of those uh, lighter tones are going to end up because of we're erasing from the darkness. So you may just about to be able to see that in this area here, if I move this across, I can turn it on and off. You can see that there's a little bit of darkness now just appearing in that area. Of course, when we've got darker shadows, we also need to introduce lighter colors as well. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. 
Tap on that new layer and clipping mask it to the leaves as well and change the blend mode from normal to the option of add. And just making sure if we go to our colors, we're using this color here at the bottom of the second column. And if we take a look, we can now start to randomly dash in again, little areas of lighter color. So now I'm gonna just sprinkle in some lighter color there. They don't all have to basically be top left edge only. Have some fun with it, like a little branch that sticks out a little bit, awesome. Give it a little bit of love. Let's then introduce little dashes and leave gaps. So you can introduce shadows, that'll look awesome. We can add some here right at the front facing us and leave that right side nice and dark. We've got a beautiful amount of contrast in there. We'll just introduce some more in there too. But you can now really see a nice rounding of the shape. You know, the odd tiny one on the end might not look too bad, but something like that is ultimately what we're going to aim for. And what you can also then do is go to the layer. You can swipe it to the left and duplicate it and really boost out those lighter tones. But I do recommend just triple checking if you've added too much, just lower the opacity down of that, maybe down to about sort of 30%, just to give it an even brighter boost, but nothing too wild. But look at that overall look of the tree, awesome. Now, because we've now added in the option of like lighting, we also need to bear in mind that we need to add some lighting to the actual tree itself now, a couple of these colors coming through the gaps. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go down into the stack here for the tree. We've got two layers clipped to it. We can create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We'll change the blend mode from normal. We'll change it to the option of add. We're gonna to go to our colors. We'll grab the top color in the fourth column and our brush. We'll go back to the option of bamboo under organic. And what we're gonna do now is introduce some brighter tones in the areas that we can see. So these are gonna be really bright and we're gonna make them glow as well, as if the sun is just beaming through and just, just really bright. So we're gonna go ahead now and just run up some of these areas that we can see on top of your lighter tones. They don't have to be bang on, that's fine. It's, you know, it doesn't really matter too much, but little strokes like this in areas that we can see some lighting will look amazing. So we're gonna go along some of these roots, along, along that one too, and especially more towards the left side, you know, that's where we're seeing the majority of the light. We can, that's probably a little bit too bright. I wanna really let the, the rounding happen here. So just let the, uh, just lighting just sit towards that left side. If we take a look at the tree, any branches that you can see, just, just give them a little bit of love. A little bit of love in here. We can add more color here to the gaps in the tree, such as here, and just keep it nice and thin though, nothing too sort of chunky like I just did. Add a little bit more onto that branch there and maybe a little bit onto there too, just a tiny bit. I'll undo that because this is really bright. Towards the top, can we see any branches? Maybe we can see a little bit of that trunk there. This is very much gonna depend on what you can see in your own design. But ultimately you could just give it the old sort of real quick sort of scribble over the top, it's totally up to you. But if you can see something in particular, just get in there, give it a little bit of love in the branches. I can see there's a nice few bits of gaps here and there throughout the whole of this. And ultimately that looks like all I can see. I don't think I can get away with anything else up here maybe. Maybe a little bit on that one. Can't see any more. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead then. And what we can do is go to the layer. We can swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Your highlight's gonna look really wild for a minute, but if we go to our adjustments and we go to the option of Gaussian Blur, and swipe from left to right, we can just add in a nice little glow to this side. So very small at zero, obviously it's really bright, but if you diffuse that and just blur that out to something around about sort of 3%, they end up with this beautiful little bit of glow, just like the sun's bouncing on it. And then as you go further, such as five, it still looks nice. But once you go beyond that, it really diffuses them and just ends up like a, a highlight sort of soft airbrush. So I'm gonna stick around about that 5% mark. I think that looks really cool. So we'll leave that at 5%. We'll zoom out and we'll tap on our adjustments when we're done. We've got these beautiful highlights. And if you want to, on the first layer, you can tap on it of our highlights, the one that's not blurred, and just maybe reduce them down just a little bit, maybe down to sort of about 70%. So I've reduced the initial sort of scrapes in our layer here of our highlights. Now, before we move on to the ground, I just wanna go ahead and add in the light source in the top left of our design. This is like our overall light source in the top left. So if we go right to the top of our layers, go above the stencil, we can create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab uh, this color here. It's the middle color in the third column from the right. 
and our brush wants to be set to airbrushing the soft brush. Gonna make it really nice and large, maybe around about sort of 40% and in a circle, just go round and just let that run over towards the tree a little bit. We need it to overlap the tree so that we can then go to the layer. We can change the blend mode from normal and we can change it to the option of add. It's gonna be really bright, too bright of course. So we can just lower that down until we end up with a little bit of a brighter source in that top left. And I'm gonna go for something around about sort of 40% there. It will vary wildly depending on how much pressure you just added there. Now we've got our light source, we've got a lot of it coming through onto the tree. We can now go ahead and work down here on the ground and we'll then go back to our rocks as well and adjust them. So we're gonna go ahead and in our layers, we can collapse the tree group down for a moment and we can go down to the ground layer and the shape that we created for it. We can tap on the layer and increase its opacity back up to 100%. We can tap on the layer and we can alpha lock it. And we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna move through some of these greens. So we're gonna grab this color here first of all, it's the bottom of the fifth column. We're gonna to go to our brush library and go to the option of textures and we're gonna use the grunge brush. Now what we're gonna do with a brush size of around about 7%, we're gonna go ahead and just in the gaps, we're gonna add in some green. So this is gonna be a nice little random scattering of this brush, which will just vary up the ground and introduce divots and uh, just, just shades of color. So we're prioritizing it a bit more over here on the left so we can be a bit braver with it. Don't go up into the gaps too much because we're just gonna shadow them anyway. And as you make your way around towards the right hand side, this is ultimately gonna be the sort of final color in a, in a way for the greens because it's not gonna get much brighter than that because the tree's gonna cast such a shadow over there. So we're just adding in some color here, nice little patches and I'm allowing it to be nice and just painty, kind of like really rough and give it a lot of texture. Then go to your colors and we're gonna go ahead and we'll move into this color here. It is the bottom of the sixth column. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same, but prioritize this color a bit more over towards the left-hand side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and in the gaps, add in some color. Now bear in mind the light source come from the left again. You don't wanna go up to here, for example, and add some bright green, because that's ultimately gonna have a shadow in a second anyway. So we're just gonna introduce some in this area that we can see and some lovely texture and leave sort of the uh, back end here of the root a little bit scarce. And then as we make our way around towards the right hand side, we will just let that just stop roughly about here. So leave the final sort of area over here completely uh, neglected from this color. And just move this round to the left hand side a bit more like so. And you can already see the lighting and how you can get a gauge that this side is brighter. Let's go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the bottom of the third column. And again, let's prioritize the left hand side. Let's go ahead and introduce some more green. Lovely brush for this type of stuff. I've used it for grass a lot lately. Love it. Let's then go ahead now and add in some shadows. So we're gonna to go to the empty layer in the ground group. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this top color here in the second or well, third column. Our brush wants to be set to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. We're gonna make it nice and small, maybe around about sort of 2%. And we're gonna to start to work in some shadows on the ground here. So in these grooves here, there's not gonna be a lot of light at all. So I'm gonna reduce the brush size even light, smaller than that, a smaller 2%, and just start to just lightly work in my shadows. So darkening up in that groove there quite a bit and on the back end here of this root and in this gap, again, darkening that up. Definitely darker in this space over here too. And the roots are gonna start to cast shadows on each other. So if I go to that layer and tap on it and make sure it's clipping mass to the ground as well, it won't run out on this right hand side here. So I can darken up over here a little bit more. I can darken up in behind some of these roots a bit more. And that does let me know that when I come back to this in a second, I can just darken that up with uh, some more of the bamboo brush as well. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the brush size down to about 1% and get as close to the point of some of these roots as I can. So just in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just darken that up really darken that up in here let that shadow just lovely just run off blend it out keep it real nice and light with your pressure let that just run out into there nice and dark though into the groove here although the light is coming across this would still have a darkness to it because it's in a little bit of a groove there so we'll just introduce a little bit of a shadow under there just a tiny one 
I'll introduce another one under here too, just a tiny one next to the root where it touches the ground. Zoom out, get an idea. You can see that shadow coming across. Let's go ahead and just, just make that a little bit bigger, this one here, about 2%. And again here too, just darken up into there too. Really push that lighting across. Taking a look at that. Now, one thing I like to do when we introduce sort of highlights and shadows like this, especially with a tree, is you wanna try and merge it into the ground a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll go to our layers and create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're just gonna utilize a lot of these greens down here. So I'll grab the brightest green at the bottom of the third column. Go to my brush library and go to the option of inking and the dry ink brush. With a very small brush size, so we're about sort of uh, 2%, the one thing you can do with this is start to just blend it into the environment. And what I mean by that is it just, let's start to create some blades of grass. Now this layer, in fact, needs to go ahead and I'm gonna move it all the way to the, above the tree group and underneath the rocks. Because what we wanna do is we wanna flick these blades of grass in front of the tree. So I'm just gonna flick and flick and flick. So again, I've got the brush size at 2%. I'm just gonna create lots of blades of grass. And you can do that in the grass area down here too not just in front of uh, the tree itself. What this will do is you can create some nice long stray ones as well, they'll look awesome. You kind of just don't get that final line, you don't get that final bit that is just the tip of the sort of root as it makes its way into the ground and it just, it just creates a bit more of a transition. So we're gonna do a lot of these ones first with the uh, blades of grass in this color and then we'll get in there in a second with lots more tones as well. But ultimately, if we just make our way all the way across here, we can add in some lovely texture. Try to prioritize this one here, this color, in a little bit of the uh, lighter area. So down here, for example, and away from those shadowy areas. Feel free as well when they like run into here, just, you know, the odd little blades looks, will look lovely. Lovely stuff, so just blades of grass, nice little flicks, majority straight, the odd ones sort of flicking over to one side. And ultimately, we're just trying to cover up just the tree and allow it just to naturally just run into the ground. Uh, not to the point where we really disguise it, but just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a, a disguise to it will look okay. And then back here, the odd little blade of grass will look nice with this lighter tone. Um, we want to keep it a little bit more scarce over here and not run these brighter greens too far to the right. So leave a little bit of a gap. And then take a look at your work again and you can already like get an impression for the land and the sort of freeness of the greenery. Create some more flicks off on that edge as well. I can create some that just run in behind some of these rocks too. A couple more streaks in there. And a couple more in here too. Not too many, just enough. Then once you've done that, grab your colour. Let's move to the darker tone, to the bottom of the fifth column, and we'll repeat. So we can go over the top of some of those greens. We can introduce some right next to them. We can just, just be nice and random with it. Nice little random flicks. These are kind of like blades of grass, but for some reason they're a little bit more shaded or just a different variation of that last blade that we use. So introducing these and in the grass as well, just beautiful blades of grass. Lovely stuff. And adding in just like a, a nice variation of color really will help just to just create a full scene, a little bit more of a full scene rather than just a few solid colors of green and that's it. And you know, grass, for example, doesn't always have to have those bright greens to it. These darker tones really will help break that up. We'll introduce some more and you can introduce some blades in there. I can introduce some more here too. Really lovely stuff. And we can introduce the odd nice larger one. I may come back later on and just add in a couple more of the larger blades in here, you know, the odd one that runs like really high above the tree roots. And then back here, this green that we're using now, it's a very gray green, may potentially end up being almost like a highlight color in some of these real shaded areas. But ultimately, we don't wanna to draw too much attention to the shadowy areas. We want it to be more focused on the left. Let's then go to our colors and move across one more. So we're at bottom now of the sixth column and we'll add in some more in here. We'll add in some in here. And ultimately the final goal will be to add in some somewhat yellow blades of grass, which are just gonna nicely uh, show some of the sunlight landing on a few of the blades. 
nice and streaky and we've already filled in quite a lot of this so I don't need to spend too much time here just enough to uh, give the impression and then I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to grab that lighter tone so the middle color in that third column from the right and over here on the left we'll just introduce a few more brighter blades catching that sunlight lovely stuff definitely in front of some of the roots as well will look nice giving it a little bit of that disguise that maybe we don't want maybe we do want introducing some more here a couple more blades the odd nice long one will look nice and focus them more so towards that left side we can introduce some here and ultimately that is done we can leave that but you just end up with that little bit more of disguised look to it now what i am going to go ahead and do though is i'm going to go to my layers and go down to the ground layer itself and i'm going to go to my colors and grab that top color here in the third column i'm going to go back to my brushes and go to textures and grunge and with a small two percent brush size i'm just going to now start to darken up the right hand side of this land so i want to just darken up a bit more with a little bit more texture over here just to really pull off those shadows a little bit more and in behind some of your blades of grass will also look nice as well i did this on my live stream when i drew this initially just it will help some of your blades of grass look nicer and brighter but we can just darken up in behind them too and i think that little bit of extra darkness just in in these roots here and on that right hand side saves you from just adjusting your tree that nicely now blends in now at this stage we're going to go ahead and add in some water ripples so we're going to go right to the top of our layers and underneath our sun we're going to create a new layer we're then going to go to our color and we're going to grab this color here it's the bottom of the uh, second column from the right we're going to go to our brush library and for you again it will be under imported but we're going to go ahead and use the uh, leatherwood brush edited by myself number one and we want the opacity to be set to 90 percent and the size set to we can probably reduce it a bit smaller than that maybe a two percent brush size and what we're going to do is we're going to add in the water and now start to convince the person looking at this that it is water. So we're going to go ahead and we're on top of everything. So bear in mind what you draw now will sit above. And I'm going to kind of chop off the bottom of the rock almost as if like the water runs into this gap here. And I'm just going to introduce some lovely horizontal lines and where the rock here is on the end, maybe the, the stream or the lake or wherever we are is just running in towards that rock. And therefore it's breaking right up against the uh, the surface a little bit creating these lovely ripples so i'm just adding that in here and immediately it convinces your brain just that oh okay yes this is this is water this all this is not like on a hill somewhere this is um, a mound of land that's sticking up out of the water we go around sort of here as well and we're going to blur these horizontally as well in a second we're going to use the motion blur Push them out to the right, create some more trails in here. And we're with the smaller 2% brush size at this point. So we're just creating lots of little, little breaks in the water. If you zoom out a little bit, get an idea for your whole design and just add in a couple more here, a couple more that stray across over here. Add in another one over here too. And then as they get a little bit closer, you can go to the 3% mark. We'll make it three percent and we'll make some slightly larger lines here so just a couple we don't don't want to go too mad with this the whole idea of this particular de design is just to be real minimal and a, a little bit sort of uh, a little bit mystical in the fact that we can't see where the land stops and ends so we don't want to add in too much here i want to kind of keep it quite minimal introduce a couple here too maybe the odd little dash will look lovely but we're not trying to sort of create like a, an ocean surface as such now, what we're then also going to go ahead and do is go to our layers, go underneath there. So tap on the stencil if you've got it or the rocks group and create a new layer. Go to your colors and grab this color here at the top of the third column. And just around the base of some of these rocks now, introduce a little bit of a darker tone here using the same kind of effect. So I'm just sort of making my way left to right, left to right a little bit underneath the white that we just drew in and just adding in a little bit of darkness there where it's now just everything's getting plunged under the water we do have reflections to add in a second as well and then i'm going to go back to my colors and grab the white tone again at the bottom of that second column from the right and i'm just going to go back to my white layer for the sort of water ripples and i'm going to get back in here again with a, a one to two percent brush size and i just want to make sure that we end up with these 
highlights that sit on top of the black tone. So any dark tones there that we added in that run onto the rocks a little bit higher than what I initially intended, um, that's fine. I can just reintroduce these white lines here and I'm bringing up the water level now by doing so. And just bringing it right up against some of the rocks. So just bringing that up, raising that up a little bit more, introducing more white, but ultimately just nice, beautiful ripples. Then what we can do is we can go to our adjustments and go to motion blur and swipe from left to right. And on this occasion, we're gonna go up to about sort of 15%, just to really just blend them out. You can go a little bit higher, you can go up to about 20, maybe 18 is a sweet spot. And then we'll tap on our adjustments when we're done. Now I wanna go ahead and just reflect the objects here in the water underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, first of all, create a layer with just the tree in the ground and then the rocks we're gonna to have to do individually. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can hold down on the tree group here, hold down on the tick and it will isolate it to just that. And then we can pick what else we wanna turn on. We wanna turn on the leaves behind it and we wanna turn on the ground group. So we'll turn that on. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn off the background color. So now it's completely transparent back there. If we then go ahead and tap on this sky group that we created here for a moment, then swipe with three fingers down and go to the option of copy all and swipe down with three fingers again and go to paste, we'll have pasted everything that the Procreate can see on the screen at that time onto one layer. And if we check our layers, you can see that inserted image here is ready to go with the tree. And if we go ahead then and hold down on the tree group, tick again, it will bring everything back into play. Now this inserted image that we created there, we can go ahead and grab our cursor, we can flip it vertically and we can move it down underneath our rocks. Now I do wanna add reflections to the rocks as well. So we're gonna move it down. And if you go ahead and turn on snapping here in the bottom left, you'll see that I've got three blue lines once I line it up that let me know one, that the entire tree has been moved down perfectly to the one above it. So we don't wanna see the green because that wouldn't be reflected because the rocks are in the way. So we wanna hit those three lines and reflect our tree to roughly around about sort of this level here. And we're gonna tap on our work cursor when we're done. We're gonna to go to our adjustments and go to the option of motion blur and we're gonna drag down in a vertical fashion, blur this out and I'm gonna go up to something around about sort of the 35% mark. And then on the layer, I'm gonna go ahead and if I make sure I'm on the layer and I go to my eraser, tap on the eraser and go to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush with a brush size, what size is this? Let's go to 20%. I'm gonna blend out that bottom edge. I'm gonna blend this out almost to a complete sort of fading here at the bottom of our canvas. And I'm gonna go back to the layer then, tap on it and just lower the opacity down a little bit down to about that 85% mark. We can come back and adjust it if need be. But that will just give us a nice, soft, beautiful reflection in the water. What we can then do is go ahead and reflect the rocks. Now we need to take a look at our rocks because these three here could be joined into one layer nicely, but these ones here on the side, we need to reflect individually. So we're gonna go to our layers and we're gonna open up the rocks group. We can do this one at a time. The rock on the far left, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And if we go ahead and we just drag it down to where our reflection is for our uh, reflection there of the tree, we can grab our cursor, we can flip it vertically and we can move it down until it links up at the bottom. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layer and we're gonna grab the next rock, which is, I think it is this one here. So it's the top of our rocks group. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it and drag it down. And we're gonna drag it down where, where the other rock is. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically, move it down until the points on either end sort of link up. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And at this point, we can actually go to them layers, tap on the top one and merge it down. So we can save on our layer count. We'll go to the next rock, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Drag it down to where they are. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically and move it down. Make sure the ends are somewhat sort of linked up. And you hit those three lines, let you know you've moved perfectly down. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to our layer, tap on it and merge it down. Go to the next rock and repeat this all the way across. So I won't skip it at all, but we're gonna grab the bottom one, drag it down towards our rocks, grab our cursor, flip it vertically and move it down. Grab those three lines, making sure you've moved it perfectly down. Go to your layer, tap on it and merge it down as well. 
And we've got two more to go, so we go to the next rock, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Drag it down towards where your rocks are. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically, move it down. Go ahead then and go to your layer. Now we need to move this layer underneath the other stack of rocks, just so it sits per perfectly in terms of perspective, because it's in behind the rocks that we saw. And then we tap on the top one with all the rocks on and merge that down. And we've got one more to go, which is this one here. It's the far right rock. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab the layer and drag it underneath your rocks. We can save ourselves a step. Grab your cursor, flip it vertically. You may not see too much of this one, but it's worth doing just in case. Tap on your cursor, go back to your layer and tap on the top lot of rocks. Tap on them and merge them down. And tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock if it is alpha locked. Then go to your adjustments, motion blur and drag down in a vertical fashion. And we can keep this nice and skinny, maybe around about sort of 17%. And we can tap on our adjustments when we're done. And we've got this beautiful reflection now of the rocks in there as well. Now, the one thing I now want to do is just make some adjustments to some of the highlights. And that will be the final step of this. I want to brighten up some of the grass and I also want to go ahead and brighten up some of the rocks. So I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to go to the ground layer here and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to tap on the layer here, the blend mode, and change it from normal to the option of overlay. And I'm going to get in there with my sun color, so the middle color here in the third column from the right. And with the option of the grunge brush, we'll go to the option of textures and grunge. I'm going to go ahead and brighten up that grass on the left hand side. So these are just those final adjustments to lighting that you want to keep to the end because you know you've got everything in position. I'm brightening up this grass here and just letting that sort of blend out towards the middle and let the let the grunge brush do like the odd little patch like there and another one maybe just above as well and just letting that brighter tone just sit on that left hand side the grass is so much brighter and more beautiful lovely stuff and we can really punch that out on the left there i'm then going to go ahead and add a little bit more color to the rocks so we're going to go to our layers and they're all alpha locked anyway so if we grab the a bottom rock in the stack which is that one on the left hand side there it's alpha locked already we can go ahead and go to our brush library and i'm going to go ahead and grab the option of painting and i'm going to use the spectra brush again but with the same color we just used a second ago the brush size around about three percent i'm just going to brighten up this edge here that faces the light source a bit more i really want to just you know left to right light to dark so that looks a little bit brighter on that left edge I'm then going to go to my next rock, which is actually at the top of the stack. It's alpha locked, so I can just nicely brighten up that top side there that's facing the light source. And maybe a little tail off there on the side. And then I'm going to go to my next one down. And we'll just brighten up that top surface as well. Just a little bit of extra highlight. And we can either stop there or we can just add a little bit to this one here. So we go down to the next rock light source edge is facing it and just adding a little bit of light on there and ultimately that just gives you so much more depth so much more shadow and contrast to the design and as a final step totally optional you can go to your layers we'll collapse the rock down and we'll open up our tree group and where we've got these add layers attached to the tree we can create another new layer tap on it and clipping mask it in and also change the blend mode from normal to the option of overlay same color as our light source still we go to our brush library and grab the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. And with a nice small brush size, maybe around about 3%, we can maybe just run down this edge of the tree just a little bit more and on top of some of these uh, little roots here on that left edge. Just give it a bit more warmth just on that side there. And that was just a really subtle color change. But if I move it off to the left for you and turn that on and off, you can see the difference that it makes. It just really helps it glow a bit more, make it a little bit warmer. Nice bright sunshine. And the very final layer, I promise. Right at the very top, we're gonna to go ahead and create a new layer. Change the blend mode from normal and change it to add. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna to go to the option of inking and the dry ink. And then just a few little leaves in here that are maybe facing our light source, just give them a little bit of a, a light scribble. I'm gonna make the brush size a bit bigger than that, maybe around about 6%. And just on top of some of the leaves, just little dashes and scrapes, just to really show that this left side is the prominent side a little bit more. And a couple of leaves are just really, really engaging with that light source and just getting really nice and bright. So just a couple of little scrapes here and there. Like so, the odd little larger one there will be fine, but it's just going to be enough just to really 
separate it a bit more. So a couple of really nice bright edges on some of these leaves. Just a couple. And these are just those final little extra touches we can always make just to really you know, bring our design to another level. So I'm only looking for the brightest leaves there. Just a few little extra patches of colour. Lovely stuff. And if we then go ahead and we pinch with two fingers, we get full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I can't wait to see your finished creations. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to hit subscribe down below. But if you want even more tutorials from me, come and join me over on Patreon, where the catalogue at the current date sits at 70 tutorials. And with three more added every single month, the catalogue just continues to grow. So if you want to get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks of designs, early access to tutorials, and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below. And if you like this tutorial here on YouTube, you might like this one as well on the screen now. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.